Hi, it's Dwyer. Money1776.com, a free site. Also, always1776.com, a free site. Today is April 6, 2024. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. I'm just telling you the areas of the market that I'm considering or pursuing, right? Let me also point out too that a lot of my money is in crypto currency, right? Just to understand, I consider certain cryptos to be generational opportunities. I discuss them on my Substack site, which has a free membership layer at dwyer70905.substack.com. That's D-W-Y-E-R 70905 dot substack dot com okay so here we're not going to discuss crypto even though cryptocurrency on the eve of bitcoins having is the elephant in the room right remember the opinion you should follow should be your own just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online now demographics really do rule the day there is a great article today, April the 6th, 2024, on the website Zero Hedge on Japan becoming far more open to immigrants. Folks, Japan has a demographics problem. It understands that you can't taper a Ponzi. Now, given the demographic problems and the debt in Europe, Japan, China, and the United States. Immigrants, ultimately, in my opinion, will win out. Countries will compete for them. Given the importance of entry-level jobs, these $20 an hour minimum wage laws will fail. I say so from Northern California, where our state legislature just passed such a law. Let's go further. This effort to ban DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, in the corporate world is going to fail. Right now, understand this artificial microcosm that we call the academic world, right? Where, you know, uh, their state funding and uh, every parent believes their kid's a gifted parent. That's a microcosm that might be somewhat insulated from market forces, right? There's a lot of politics, always has been in the academic world on who gets tenure, who gets recruited, who gets to say what, in the controlled atmosphere that is a college campus. But in the corporate world, understand markets matter. Right? The anti DEI group is a pre Jackie Robinson view of the world that assumes that people of color like me are going to be your customers even when you exclude them. Right, understand, this world seems to assume that what's local is what's global. When you and I fully understand that, quite frankly, there are very successful businesses being run by people who would be on the other side of the DEI argument here in the United States. Just recognize that your competition is going to have women who, keep in mind, we still haven't had a female president of the United States, right? As if there was no woman in the 19th or 20th century who could have done a better job than some of the presidents we've had, James Buchanan, for example, right? Folks, when you exclude talent, just understand you're going to get the subpar results we've gotten with Herbert Hoover and countless other presidents. 
So just understand, your competition is going to have women and minorities in senior positions, and they're going to take away some of your customers. So much of the DEI conversations, they're fake. They're really designed for some microcosm that's immune from free markets. They want you to believe that before Jackie Robinson, there was no person of color who played at a major league level. Right, folks? That fictional world is going to implode. Now, I believe savvy people want their economics to be frictionless. Whatever the rest of the world is doing, they could be placing tariffs on our products. Right? Whatever they're doing, whatever politicians are saying, right? Just understand we should have one man's opinion, no tariffs. We should have no price ceilings, right? You want to know the best answer to high prices? It's high prices, right? When prices get too high, then that incentivizes entrepreneurs to come in, grab a part of the profits, participate by lowering prices, right? We should have no price floors, What's going to happen? I can tell you with certainty. What's going to happen in the fast food space here in California is that entrepreneurs are going to jump into the market with new chains that are going to have less labor, more robotics, cheaper prices, right? They're also going to, with the existing stores, have deals on apps that aren't advertised at the store where someone going to a McDonald's as I can here in Northern California can take out the app and get two breakfast sandwiches for the price of one significant discount I can pay online disintermediate the $20 an hour cashier right get a deal that people in the restaurant don't have access to have it be so clandestine that I can get the deal at the drive through by ordering on the app. I just bypass the cashier at the drive through then they'll give me that second breakfast sandwich for free. Right? Understand, too, we should have, in fact, we will have, because that's the reality, many more work visas. What should be non-negotiable should be our constitutional rights. Right free speech, the right to vote, the right to a fair trial, the right to counsel, the idea that government at a minimum needs probable cause to search your belongings if you have been targeted. Right, that's where the friction should come in. Not in terms of the market. Let's continue. And feel free to disagree with me in the comment section of this video. Understand, YouTube is set up to be interactive. When I make statements that you strongly disagree with, and many of my subscribers strongly disagree with some of the comments I've just made, right? Many of my closest friends believe in things like living wage, right? Every job is supposed to be able to allow you to afford your mortgage, right? You aren't supposed to have the decision making to think that flipping burgers might not be enough to support a family of four, right? The burden shouldn't be on you. It should somehow be on employers who are trying to sell hamburgers, right? Well, let's talk markets. Now, the jobs numbers exceeded expectations. Now, let me make a point here. I'm not that interested in political narratives, right? I'm more interested in supply and demand than I am what any self-serving politician or political appointee has to say to get reelected or to keep their jobs, right? We want to look at what's actual. The facts matter here, right? Now, the jobs numbers exceeded expectations, even with, of course, 
the explosion of part-time jobs, the deterioration in the quality of jobs, right? You have a lot of people out there, folks, delivering fast food through DoorDash, right? Far cry from some of the jobs they had when I was a kid. Nonetheless, jobs numbers exceeded expectations. The economy continues to run hot. Right? Your unemployment rate's around 4% or less, which is low historically. Right? Let's not get into <laughs> the change in methodology in terms of calculating that rate and the fact that it doesn't count discouraged workers. Let's just take it at face value for purposes of this conversation. Right? Just understand that inflationary pressures remain. Right? You have a lot of people working. Presumably they're competing for the items on the shelf in the supermarket. The supermarket person who has to pay higher wages, in part because of these minimum wage laws, is passing a lot of costs on to you. You may have noticed that food has jumped in price. Former Harvard president Larry Summers estimates that using old methodology, the inflation rate was 18% in 2022. Well, just understand, as inflationary pressures remain, that's bullish for oil and gas. I want to target one stock here, Exxon. The symbol is XOM. It recently hit a 52-week high. Folks, at the time of this video, it's above $121 a share. When I made my last video a week ago, I believe I quoted the share price of Exxon, and at that time it was below $117 a share. Now, if you're into stock technicals, just understand the 14-day relative strength index, and we'll call that RSI, was around 80, which is elevated. But understand, I believe this shift in the price of Exxon is structural. So even with the high RSI, I remain bullish. Right? Take a look at Exxon. Take a look at other companies that are similarly situated, like Chevron, like Oxy. Okay, now let's move to the precious metal space. Let's take a look at the GDX right, which is a gold ETF. Just understand, it is at $33.84 at the time I'm making this video. It's above a 14-day RSI of 70%. But here again, I'm bullish even with the high RSI because I believe that gold has been undervalued for so long that there's a possibility that gold explodes like cocoa has exploded. Let's also take a look at silver miners. I want people to take a good look at silver crest metals. The symbol is SILV. Again, SILV. The price at the time of this video is $7.17 a share. Understand here again, it's at almost a 14-day RSI of 70%. And here again, even with the high RSI, which suggests that it's overbought, I remain bullish because like gold, I believe silver has been undervalued for so long that it's going to defy some of the traditional technical indicators. Now let's talk about a foreign AI play. I've mentioned it in, I believe, at least the last two episodes of this series. It's Alibaba. Now here, I want folks to realize how different the lay of the land is overseas. Believe it or not, Alibaba, which in my eyes is very well positioned, has a 14-day RSI below 50%. In other words, contrasted against the other plays I'm interested in here, 
that have very high RSIs. Here you're getting a cheaply priced juggernaut stock. The recent price of the stock is $71.66 a share. Here's what you need to know. And I'm going to put a link to the article in the comment section of this video. 80% of China's technology companies and half of China's companies involved in large language model development. Large language models are used in artificial intelligence. Run on Alibaba Cloud. Now that's according to Alibaba's chairman in an interview yesterday with Nikolai Tangen, the chief executive at the branch of Norway's central bank that is responsible for managing the world's largest sovereign wealth fund. Right? Mr. Tsai is the chairman of Alibaba. I need for people to understand that here in the United States, we're hearing a lot of buffoonery, quite frankly, about how we're denying China, a country that has some of the world's fastest computers. Just Google it. We're denying them the latest technology from NVIDIA. Uh, somehow we're supposed to be crippling their ability to develop AI. The article I'm going to link to here in the comment section of this video has the chairman of Alibaba talking about how China has to play catch up. They're two years behind the United States. What that means to me is that China is aggressively trying to keep pace in the artificial intelligence field. Let me point out, too, that there are some very well-known investors. The owner of the New York Mets, Steve Cohen, right? He was um, one of the inspirations for the Bobby Axelrod figure on the show Billions, right? Just to understand, he believes that AI is so momentous that people are valuing this stock market by the increased productivity that AI is bringing to the party. In other words, you're talking about extremely important technology. And here you have an extremely well-positioned company in China who's investing in AI. Right, Alibaba is investing significant money in AI and, of course, they run one of the dominant cloud platforms in the country. And you're able to get them today at below the 14-day relative strength index um, of 50%. Right, folks? That's crazy. Right? I'm just telling you people who study markets see opportunities that the public, distracted by self-serving politicians, haven't heard of. So they're walking into bank vaults, open bank vaults, with sacks, and they're loading up. I believe Alibaba is one of those opportunities. That's how I see the world on April 6, 2024. Tell us how you see the world. Tell us about the investment opportunities that interest you if you want to critique some of the plays I've mentioned, right? Exxon, for example. Alibaba, for example. Please feel free to do so in the comments section of this YouTube video. GDX, SILV, give us your thoughts, as well as any special investment opportunities that you want to share with other subscribers. Thanks for stopping by.